Hello everybody, my name is Neil MacDonald uh, and I'm the Chief Exec of Buckinghamshire Healthcare NHS Trust. Um, and I'd like to thank you this afternoon for joining us to take the time to reflect. And reflection um, is really important. Um, we in the health service um, and you in the public have just been through something that nobody else has ever been through before. Um, and parts of it have been uh, really horrible. Um, we've had to make some significant sacrifices as a society. We've been in lockdown. We've not been able to see our loved ones or families. Um, we've not been able to see our, our relatives in care homes. In the health service, we were forced to postpone and stop um, a lot of um, routine work um, that we were doing. Um, we've had to see exposed in front of us some of the inequalities that exist in society and some of the disastrous impact that's had on outcomes for colleagues who perhaps live in deprived areas or are, or are of a certain race um, or don't have the same access um, of opportunity as others. Uh, and of course we've lost people. Um, I've lost colleagues, um, you've lost loved ones um, and society will never be the same again. But reflection um, is really important because out of any crisis or anything that's horrible um, there are always things for us to learn and to take hope from. So I've learnt more about myself in the last eight months as a leader than I've learnt in the previous 15 years I've been working in the health service. I've seen my colleagues uh, and uh, friends do some extraordinarily brave things in confronting something they didn't understand, uh, they weren't sure how to deal with, um, but they put themselves in harm's way um, to help protect um, the public and their families. Um, we've also learned how to do things differently in healthcare. We've greatly accelerated um, new treatments and new ways of doing things, um, new technology to help us, um, and we've um, uh, never had so much public support, um, appreciation, gifts, chocolates, claps, um, and those have really helped us feel positive about that we are looking to do the right thing. So reflection is really important. Um, we've learned a great deal from what we've been through. Um, we hope that actually we can take that learning and make society a fairer and a better place. Um, and I hope you enjoy your time to reflect this afternoon. Hello, my name's Elaine Blaine, and I am a senior, one of the senior bereavement officers at Stoke Mandeville Hospital. And looking after the bereaved is my passion and in fact, I would call the way that we operate compassionate administration, as although we are here to do the paperwork for the families so that they can register their deaths and move forwards, we have to do that with kindness, care, understanding. It's amazing the sorts of things that we can be asked of when we take phone calls from families and I consider it a privilege to be alongside them at such a crucial time. And people talk about my job being an awful job, but I've not found it to be so. Some of the, the, the best, most hilarious moments have come from being alongside families when they come to collect their paperwork and the stories that they'll, they'll tell us, it just, invigorates me to do my job and want to come in even when I think oh I don't want to I still want to because I love it. Hello my name's Satvinder Orlak and I'm the leadership development lead for Buckinghamshire Healthcare NHS Trust and I'm going to speak a little bit about Covid and um, equality and diversity and inclusion and the impact on me on a personal level and the impact you know, on, on, on our organisation and the impact on some of our staff and possibly some solutions to it. So how has it impacted me on me on a personal level? Um, as you're aware, disproportionately, ethnic minority groups have been impacted by COVID and it's been general that they have been impacted by COVID. So I think for me, quite a lot of my family members have unfortunately, extended family members have passed during COVID. And I think it's been kind of quite emotional. It's been traumatic and it's been that loss. So on, on that personal level, I've had to deal with that. 
On the other level, I do live alone and, and my family do not live locally to me. They live in the Midlands. So actually there's been something about being institutionalised myself in my home and working from home. So I think it's, it's a few factors around COVID that can impact on people. Generally, what has helped me, I think the compassion and, and the kindness of all my friends that have kept in touch with me via Zoom and virtually and checked in on me and ensured that I'm safe and well. And I think that's really key and, and really important at this unprecedented time and how people are feeling generally. How about on a community level? I think as we're aware, people who are elderly, disabled people, people from ethnic minority groups, especially the news is saying consistently the Bengali community have really been impacted by COVID and the majority of deaths in the ethnic minority Bengali community has been much more. So there's something around, well, actually, how do we support our friends? How do we contact them? So one of the things I'd like to ask you is, when did you next contact your friend? Have you been in touch? And if you haven't, can you do that? Because if you're doing that, these acts of kindness and compassion can support people to deal with this change, to deal with this time of difficulty and to deal with now. So just to summarise, what I'd like to talk about is to say to people around COVID, if we're looking at equality, diversity and and inclusion, I think the main thread of all of this is compassion and kindness and belonging. So if your friends and family and people that you know that you feel can you can give them some belonging or you can give them some connection and do it. And even the people that you don't know, you know, next door neighbours, people that you can work with, people that you can support, how much of that can you do? So doing that enable somebody to feel empowered, feel supported and feel some affection and connection. Thank you. My name is Hilary McClintock and I'm the chaplain at Florence Nightingale Hospice. Part of the role of a chaplain is to come alongside families and patients at all parts of uh, the process of, of going through illness and it's a time where the old normality has gone. There's a new normality of, of funerals where the old routine has gone. Funerals have got fewer people at them. Families have to decide how many to invite. So it's a new way of helping families through the old rituals and it's a great privilege to be able to do that. The old familiar face of a chaplain has, has changed quite considerably. What you see is me in my mask. That's what patients and families see. But really, what I want them to be able to see is this face. And sometimes the funeral is the first time where families and loved ones will see the face of a chaplain. So we have a new familiar of wearing PPE. But what has never changed is the voice that the chaplain will have in coming alongside the person who's, who's in the hospice or in the hospital, coming alongside families and loved ones. The voice that should really be consistent across all the time. The voice that sits with the, the patients and says words when even somebody's eyes may be closed and not see your face, they can hear. And our job is to offer support and words of comfort and to continue that process. Sometimes, yes, it's by helping a family through the grieving process of a funeral, but it doesn't stop there. It doesn't have to stop there because we have the, the bereavement and listening support service and that is there ongoing, maybe a month, maybe a year, maybe longer down the line for the family. Our role is to be a presence and a support. And in the way we do that, we are consistent and we want to be there at all times, whatever we have to wear, PPE or not. Uh, hello, I'm Alan Watts. I'm chair of the Florence Nightingale Hospice Charity Trustees. Uh, and I'm gonna say a few words about how the pandemic has affected the charity uh, through the eyes of a trustee. 
Uh, there have obviously now been two lockdowns and it has had significant effect on the charity. Uh, the first lockdown caused the shops to have to shut. Most of the retail staff were then furloughed. Uh, some of the staff were kept on who went to great lengths to plan to reopen the shops and to deal with the huge numbers of donations that the charity has been lucky enough to receive since the first lockdown opened. The charity was able to open some of the larger shops which were able to be COVID safe uh, during the uh, gap between the first and the second lockdown. The second lockdown has obviously had a significant impact again in that all the shops are shut. Fundraising has had to furlough a large number of its staff as well because all the, all the mass participation events that the charity normally organise have had to be cancelled due to the pandemic. However, we have been very fortunate that the small number of staff who were retained have been able to organise events such as Not the Midnight Walk, uh, which had a huge number of participants and raised more money than the Midnight Walk has done in previous years, for which we have been extremely grateful as it has gone a long way to helping the charity to be able to maintain its donations to the hospice. The volunteers have all been affected in that most of them were asked to stand down we have been extremely grateful for their patience while we have worked with them to try and get them back to helping with the, some of the things that the charity has used them to do in the past, like organising the newsletter to be sent out. The charity has also been fortunate to benefit from government grants and the support of a large number of its landlords. Like a large number of charities, we have had to restructure as a result of the pandemic. However, the charity is well placed if a vaccine is successful to restart its normal fundraising events and for the shops to be reopened next year. There may be some alternatives events because of the effects of the pandemic but the charity feels confident that it will be able to go back to raising significant amounts of money to continue to support the, the hospice in the way that it has traditionally done and that the level of funding that the charity will be able to provide will not be cut. There is an exciting new fundraising initiative in the pipeline at the moment which is Nightingale's Rainbow and more about that will be available in the next few weeks and months. This year has been a very strange year for everyone. We have not been able to go out as much, we have not been able to see our families and we've had rationing of toilet paper. Um, but in the hospital and in the hospice we've had huge changes and because of Covid and some of that has been that we've had to look at the services that we, prov we provide and instead of seeing people face to face we've had to do it over the telephone. But the biggest change that we've had to do whether that is in the hospital, our community services or within our hospice is that we've had to care for people with a mask on. So much of your communication is done by your face. I will have patients tell me I knew it was good news, I knew it was bad news because I could tell what my, what my wife's face was like, what the doctor's face was like. We've taken away that, this mask has taken away all those little things that we pick up on. I get patients that will say to me, oh that nice nurse, the one that always has a smile on her face. They don't remember names but they'll remember things like that. We've taken all of that away. Within palliative care we do a lot of tactile, we're, we're very tactile. We give hugs, we hold people's hands, we can't give the hugs at the moment but we can hold your hand, but we have to do it with a glove on. These are all huge differences to the way that we usually work. But through it all, even with a mask on, we can show you that we care. We can show, you know, I've been very proud that people can still feel that people want to do their best for, for their loved ones. They, they can still feel that kindness that's coming from staff. They can still feel that compassion from staff. We've had some great um, interactions with our public. Um, lots of publics read about the, the 
the hearts and one heart goes with the patient and one heart goes with the relative so they can be together. I didn't have to ask for these, people just sent them to me. I have 500 pairs in my office now and I'm still getting people emailing me saying, have you run out yet? Would you like me to knit some more? And those little things help families stay together when we had to restrict visiting because we didn't, we, we, we had to protect everyone. Um, but that was hard. That was hard for families. We had um, the hearts, we had the emails, we had the virtual visiting, they could, they could use the um, iPad, people could take that. All those little ways that we, we, we tried to keep people together. And I think, you know, one of the biggest things that I, I got um, given the other day was a thank you letter that said that thing about actually, I'm so grateful that we got to be in. I'm so grateful that we could use the iPad to say, to show our loved one in Australia and for them to be able to say goodbye. I think this is a time where everything is still in a state of flux and we don't know what's going to happen in the next few months. But what I can say uh, to everyone is that the care and the compassion that I have seen staff give to people is not going to change and that is always going that's a huge part of everything that we do and that will continue to be a huge part of everything that we do. Normally at the Tree of Light or, or at the Time to Remember we get something to read so this is a bit unusual but it has been very difficult times for us due to the Covid and we have struggled somewhat and felt it that we haven't been able to do quite what we would normally do with our patients and our relatives but we've definitely done our best, we've been as flexible as we can and yeah it's been tough for them and for us because we, and we've missed the interaction between the volunteers and each other and everybody but at the end of the day it's still a privilege it still makes a difference I think what we do and certainly what the charity does to help people in a very difficult situation that's become even more challenging for everybody. Whatever there is tomorrow when we're not together, there is something you must always remember. You are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. But the most important thing is, even if we're apart, I'll always be with you. like a surprise I'd not planned for. One minute we were arguing about what to watch on TV and then the next Covid had arrived. First it was other people and other people's countries, what a shame. Then it was ours. Ooh, why isn't there no food on the shelves? Everything's going to close. We can't let the visit family visit. Lockdown. Okay, we can keep ourselves safe and it'll soon be over. But we couldn't and it isn't. I keep reliving in my head how Covid got in. Was it me going to the shops? Was it him shaking hands? Was it the checkout girl? Was it the kind man bringing the tablets? We locked down but still it happened. He was a bit under the weather. A cold, then came the cough. Then he couldn't get out of bed. The doctor couldn't come. The ambulance came and took him. They phoned me every day until the last day. I'm so sorry he's died. Did I dream it? Did it really happen? Are they sure he's dead? 
but I look at his chair and I know it's true. It was not how it was supposed to be. He should have been here longer. I should have been there. Covid stole him, but it won't endure. Our love will. I was loved, it can't take that. I can love, it can't have that. It's all about love, it's the small things, the kindnesses. Did you see the people clapping for the front line? Did you hear about the volunteers and their thousands offering to help? Humanity, it can't have that. So please keep sending me your messages of support. Keep talking to me at the tills. Please listen to me when I want to talk and allow me to be quiet when I don't. Don't wait to be called, just call. Smile at me because you can. And in those moments, my grief will be easier to bear. And I know that everyone's grief is different and I can't pretend to know the depth of anybody's heartache. I can't pretend that we're fixing it, but if you need some emotional support, we're here to help. Just give us a call at the hospice. Thank you. Let's pause and reflect on the role of the staff member, the family member and the patient. Everybody has in common their own humanity and the difficulties that they've been through. But we're more than just our assumed roles and the names that we carry on our badges. We all have the capability of love and caring for each other and that connects us all. So as we light this candle, let's pause for a minute and reflect on everybody in this situation. And also, let's do that in light and in love. Humans can do extraordinary things um, and they are driven by kindness and if we are all kinder to each other and um, we take a moment, just a small moment um, in the course of our working busy days to be kind to people, um, not only does it make ourselves feel healthier, so the act of being kind to someone um, has direct health benefits, um, but it will also create a kinder and more understand uh, understanding society. So thank you for being part of this conversation this afternoon. So as I recite this, in the midst of a new crisis, the parallels are all so true. We retreat indoors, there's nothing to do. Tears one, two and three didn't last long, see. There's only one thing for you and me. Write and read, or read and write, an autumn spring clean seems so right. Walk and talk, or talk and walk, turn over your allotment with a new fork. We all need try, to grasp with both hands a love for nature and appreciate our lands. Yes, it's not all bad. Of yourself be glad. Time to leave the rat race. Live life at a slower pace. For time on your hands is not a bad thing. You'll know that for sure once you're back in the swing. The changes you make during COVID could turn out the best things you ever did. <laughs>